this. When a, when a Gentile comes to faith in Messiah, he gives up his paganism. When a Jew comes up to Messiah, gives up legalism. But you don't stop being a Jew. You don't stop being a Gentile. You don't stop being a Gentile. Right. Now, what's interesting in the body of Christ is Christianity has tried to make everything look Gentile. Turn to Galatians 3. Another passage that is misunderstood. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. What does Paul say there, Donna? It says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile in God's messianic. Both are now one. There's neither Jew nor Gentile in God's messianic community. Well, there it is, Pastor. See, there's, there's neither Jew nor not, not Gentile. See, what you just said, there's, you're either a Gentile or you're Jew. And Paul, I, I got word, Pastor, it says there's neither Jew now nor Gentile. So is that what Paul means? Does Paul mean that, that yeah, your Gentileness goes and your Jewishness goes? Now, hold that thought for a minute. If it does mean that, isn't it interesting that the New Testament church begins to look Gentile? I mean, if there's a new man in Christ, why do you still look like a Gentile? You know, when, when Christians will say to the Jew, you've got to stop going to, you got to stop being a Jew. You're no longer a Jew. You're now a Christian. Well, why does the one new man in Christ suddenly look like a Gentile and not look like a Jew? But I know that's not what he means. Why? Because what else does he say? Finish, finish it on here. Uh, it says in here, um, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor nor female, for you are all one in Yeshua. So for one in Yeshua, if, if, if Jew and Gentile means Jew has to disappear, Gentile has to disappear, because we're one in Yeshua, well, what do we do with male and female? That's right. Viva la difference. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is, is, that what he, is that what he's saying? That, that in the body of Christ, you're not a woman, I'm not a man? Yeah. We learned about that this morning. You know, I, I mean, that, that, that's, that's pretty amazing. Because when I look at the church, I see women and I see men. That's right. I don't see an androgynous group. <laughs> and I see men and women getting married, and lo and behold, they're having children, which means they're still men and women, because it takes a man and a woman to have a child. That's right. So when Paul says, in the church, there's neither Jew nor Greek, Jew nor Gentile, if, if it means that you, you lose your identity as a Jew and your identity as a, as a Gentile and become some one new Christian thing, then, then what, what do we become? Do I become an, uh, what, what do I, I'm no longer a man. Or you're a man. No, I'm not a man because the Bible says I'm not. Well, you're a woman. Well, actually, I'm not a woman either because the Bible says there's no woman, there's no man. You know, what are we, sexless or something? We can, see, all you had to do is look at it and say, that cannot be what it means. You can't, right. Amen. Right. And, and Paul didn't mean that either about being a slave or a free man. Because nope. read the book of Philemon. Right. He sends the slave Onesimus back to his master. Right. And, and Onesimus is a believer. He's a Christian, but he's a slave. Philemon is a Christian. He's the slave owner. And what Paul is saying, you need to treat each other with all the respect and love as believers in Christ. But he doesn't say he's no longer a slave and you're no longer the slave owner. So obviously he didn't mean that this was not a message that went into that all come into the church and suddenly all the free slaves are free and all the owners have no... That was not... He addresses that in another place. But that's not what that means. They're still slave and free. They're still male and female. And they're still Jew and Gentile. But in Christ, something has happened that transcends our, our separateness. That's right. In Christ, something brings us into what the Bible calls one flesh. One flesh doesn't mean she's not a woman. One flesh does not mean I'm not a man. One flesh means together we achieve a much broader understanding of what God did. He together, together we give the complete picture. We give the complete picture. That's and what did we read this morning? He created Adam. That's right. It says he created Adam. Adam. Now we think, well, that's Adam. Well, and that's true, but mankind. at that point it says, I created Adam, mankind, male, male and female, he created him. That's right. So the word Adam is the fullness of male and female. All right? So when God created Adam, who was he? What was he? <laughs> he was of wholeness. He was, he was whole. That's right. 
He was whole, but he had no completeness of, of fellowship. There was not a helpmate suitable for him. Right. So what did God do? He says, okay, you go to sleep, and I'm going to go over here and create a woman. Oh, no. no. God didn't say, okay, I formed Adam out of the dust of the ground, molded him, and then what did he do? He breathed life. Breathed life. Adam is, is simply fashioned and sculptured, just standing there. No heart beating, nothing. And God That's right. imparts the Ruach HaKodesh into him. That's right. And he becomes a speaking, speaking spirit, is what the literal Hebrew says. Not he becomes a living being, is what most of the, our Bible says. But literally it is, he becomes a yeah. speaking spirit. That's right. He becomes a he speaking spirit. Okay, and in that speaking spirit that he is, is absolute knowledge. That's right. He can name all the animals. He has total understanding. Come on. Right. And, and so now, when, when, when God says, I'm going to create a helpmate for him, God doesn't say, look, you go take a nap in the hammock, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to mold me a woman, and I'm going to breathe in her the breath of life, but he takes something out of Adam. That's right. Hmm? And, and he takes the rib, okay, takes a rib, and fashions a woman out of it. Masterfully crafts. That's, what, that's right. That is the Hebrew, isn't it? You know, with He formed and squeezed and molded the man out of the dirt, but he masterfully crafted the woman. That, it is, that is. That is the Hebrew, the, that is the Hebrew. You know, he, he kind of pounded, he pound pounded, pounded the man together, but he crafted the woman. <laughs> and, 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 but notice what Adam says when he, when he comes to meet her. She, God brings her to him, and there's Adam, and he doesn't go, who are you? He says, whoa, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Whoa, man. man. No. <laughs> he, he, he says, this is flesh of my flesh. flesh, bone of my bone. That's right. Which is an outward description that he said, my Lord, you are cut out of the fabric of me. You, I, I look at you and, and, and you are me. I, he recognized well, that he recognized something was something fulfilled within himself. Empty here he wasn't here. complete without that. That's right. So when he woke up, it was like I'm sure he felt there was something. Something's missing. Something's missing. I'm not quite there. And then when he looked at her, it's like, whoa, there it is. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Now we're complete. Now we can become one. That's right. But now one is absolutely vital because God's right. plan is that's right. That, that's power in you. That hey man, yes sir. No matter how good you become, no matter how you're thinking and study scripture and, and, and grow your life and do all the things that, that, that make you a man and make you feel good as a man and enhance you as a man, you will never be whole without her. No, and that's why he goes on to say it is not good for man to be alone. Why? Because he's not complete. I'm not complete. He can't reach the heights he's supposed to by himself. Well, likewise, the woman can't either. She needs the man. Right. So, so here's the woman, likewise... You know, independent. And what is society? What has the devil tried to do with us? Yeah. Tries to make the woman independent and the man independent. That's right. But God's plan was that an way. We'll never be plan. the power we're supposed to be. That's, That's right. His plan. Because He knows that if we get to oneness, That's right. There's a power in that That's that right. He can't touch. That's right. That's right. He knows it's that. That power of that one flesh and, and, and agreement. And so, so. If he can keep man and woman separate, then God's plan can get frustrated. That's right. But that means a man has got to recognize, I am incomplete, unfulfilled, and can in no way be whole without what she brings to me. That's right. And the woman has to recognize, there's no way I can be complete without, right. without what he brings. That's okay? right. So in Christ, we are one. Now, where do we find that oneness? I submit to you, you can't find that apart from Christ. No, you cannot. In the world, there no, are... You don't, have the, you don't have the tools with which to do it. permanently attach that two pieces together. You don't. That's why the world is such a mess. Men and women. Man can't understand the woman. Woman can't understand the man. Why? They don't have Yeshua 
to enlighten them to, to figure out it's an eternal concept. So they don't have that, the, the, the breadth to understand the mystery, the power that, that lies, this, this revelation that lies within. If you just come together, then you are my man for the hour. And, right, and so, so the, the, the thing that is the binding agent to Paul mm -hmm. is belief in Yeshua. Yeshua in your life, Yeshua in my life, that is the glue that holds yep. us together. That's right. Now, without Yeshua, then, what are you trying to do? You're trying in the natural to bind it together. You're trying behavior modification. So, so what you do, well, I like sports. Do you like sports? No? Okay, well, I won't have sports anymore. That'll make it nice, nice and harmonious. Uh, do you like the beach? Yeah. Uh, I like the mountains. She says, well, we'll go to the mountains. And so we start compromising to build unity. Right. It's not, you be fully who you are, I'll be fully who I am, and it draws us together, because in the world, when a man and woman are being fully who they are in the world, it drives them apart. So they start to give up and, 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 and to compromise and, or to try to force this one to think like me. And we're all trying it at a social level, an emotional level, right. a physical level. Uh, you know, how do we even get attracted to people? You know, well, they like what I like. See, we're trying to get unity in this world, but unity comes from another dimension. That's right, it sure does. And so in Christ, there's neither male nor female, but in the world, there is strongly male and strongly female. And that's what we, we heard that this morning, is that, that the Jews believe that in the Messianic era, right. that there's no longer, they have that concept. Yeah. See, they believe that in the Messianic era, Abba takes care of that whole thing, you know, that, that here's the female here. Because when they're talking about all the, the separations of, you know, the male has to be commanded to do all these mitzvahs, you know, commanded to do this, commanded to pray, commanded to do that. But the woman naturally does it. Because the woman kind of, how did it say it, that she kind of operates on this higher spiritual level anyway, and the man needs to be commanded. And if he's commanded, he's going to do it. But without the commandments, he might not do it. But the woman is just prone to it. She's just like elevated to that. You know, she's drawn to that sure. kind of a thing. But in the, they, and they recognize that as a two separate entities were trying to come together. But in the messianic age, there's not going to be any more of that anyway, anymore. It's going to be that Abba takes care of things, the most high God takes care of things, and then we, we go back to that oneness of the original Adam. Well, what are we in? Yeshua has come. It's the Messianic age, isn't it? So when Paul says that there, that is what he's saying. There's no more male or female. See, so people, if you don't understand the Jews and what they believe and what they know, you miss the, you miss the whole point of this. What do you mean? No, no male, no female. That's what it means. He's saying we're in the Messianic age now. That mystery, that, that revelation, that, that gifting of eternal concept is now in operation here. So in him... There is no more male or female. There's just, when he looks at us, we're just one. He just sees his creation, his, his sons and daughters, yes, but it's like it's his child. We're one in them. So that's what that passage is saying. A very rabbinic passage that you can't understand at all if you exclude Judaism out of your upbringing. That's right. Okay? That's right. So the rabbis today, you know, that, they'll explain why in the synagogue, for example, you go to an Orthodox synagogue, Women sit in the back, men up front, women in the balcony, maybe men down below. And they have, uh, we're going to talk about it in a few minutes, they have a wall that divides them. Uh, but they believe in the Messianic age, all that's going to disappear. Why? Right. Because when Messiah Why? comes, <laughs> when Messiah comes, he's going to bridge that yeah. gap. And the minute I read that, I'm reading this rabbi say that, I'm saying, that's what Paul was talking about. That's right. The Messiah is here, the Messianic age is here, so there is neither male nor female. Now, how can you get to that? You can only get to that through Yeshua. That's right. Okay? That's only right. when I see that Yeshua, my Lord, is Donna's Lord. That's right. And when I report to him, waiting for his instructions on how to treat his daughter. Amen? Because one thing I know is Yeshua in her is the same Yeshua in me. That's right. See, I know that about you as brothers and sisters. If you're truly a child of God, in you is what's in me. You may not have been listening, you may not comprehend, you may not see it, but I have absolute confidence. That's why if you're a believer, I don't spend a lot of time beating people on the head about sin. No. I'll put it in your face, boom, there it is, and let it go. You know why? I have full confidence that the Holy Spirit in your life is the same Holy Spirit in my life, and I know what he does in my life. Boom, he's in my face. Amen? Amen? Amen. 
uh, you know, whether you listen to him or not, that's your choice. But if you won't listen to him, surely you're not going to listen to me. That's right. But why do I have that confidence? Because I know what's in you is in me. If you're born again, I know that. you got the same Lord. He's not telling you, you know, one thing and telling me another thing. That's right. There's something, one of us isn't hearing right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when we, when we come to that, we can begin to see how uh, unity comes. Now, do you understand that with male and female? Well, what about Jew and Gentile? That's right. Okay? The mystery is this. We could say the mystery of humanity is that woman has now become part of man. And man is very happy. <laughs> okay? The mystery is that Gentile has now become part of Jew. That's right. And Jew is very happy. Now, Pastor, do you have any evidence of that? Yeah. Those of you who are in Israel with me, last night in Israel, when we visited those families, That's right. what do you think happened? Amen. They were ecstatic yes, they were. at meeting Christians who love Torah. That's right. They had one thing in mind, we're going to sit here as Jews, we're going to talk to some Christian people, we have in our mind what Christians are, and all of a sudden, we come waltzing in their life, and we love Tehran. We're, we keep Sabbath, and we're trying to, we keep the festivals, and we're trying to find out what God's will is. And they were absolutely 